Hey there, Fellowship family. Welcome to your one-stop shop for all things church life. I'm Mark Francis, and once again, the host for today. We are um, blessed to have a couple of guys here to be able to chat with us about the local church and even beyond that, more about the local church, but specifically community groups. And I will introduce you guys in a second, but just knowing that ministries are being launched around here, fall is here, it's kicked off. This specific coming Sunday, our sermon series of what really matters and how we interact with our core values here at Fellowship Bible Church is focused on loving the church. So we are speaking to you before that sermon has happened. You guys might have um, experienced that sermon by, by the time you pick this up and listen to it. There'll be added information and added depth and knowledge for you of what it means to love the church. So. Here with me to my right, your audience watching the left, this is Pastor Tim Sanford, Pastor of Discipleship. How are you? I'm doing great. You're with us again. Um, uh, yes. And, can't get rid of me sometimes. Can't get rid of you. Like I'm not sure if you've been on our Fellowship Family podcast yet. Never. So we have had you on Sermon Spotlight yep. and have been blessed to have you in the pulpit and respond to those um, sermons, which is awesome. So now you get a chance to add a little more content yeah, about great. community groups and great. discipleship. Yes. Over here on my left, you're watching home. Your right is, I, there's no title for you, Marlon. <laughs> I will give you something, but this is Marlon Beitzel. <laughs> sure. How are you? Good, good. Good. And I have to refer back to one of Tim Sanford's yeah. sermons. He's, uh, where he's infamous. He Sheesh. referenced the the famous and the words of famous Marlon Beitzel, <laughs> I'm picking up what you're laying down. <laughs> that came out in the sermon. It did. <laughs> and much so, to my chagrin. Yeah. So you guys <laughs> must have met each other a little while back because, we Tim, did. you're getting around the church now. You've been here for four months. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, Marlon, I'll come to you first. Just um, <laughs> <laughs> remember, I have the last word, Marlon. Yeah. yeah. Boy. <laughs> Just <laughs> share a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, so Dawn is my wife. We've been here at Fellowship Bible Church for, I don't know, 24 years, something like that. Um, we got two daughters, uh, Martha and Emma. And Emma is married to Ethan Cox, whose parents also attend Fellowship Bible Church. Uh, they are both in mission slash ministry um, as well. Um, but specific to Fellowship Bible Church, uh, we've done a variety of things since we've been here, from teaching some learning centers uh, to uh, leading some small groups and just a variety of ministries that we've been involved in some over the pre -marriage years. pre-marriage counseling. counseling. We do. Yeah, we kind of help in heading up some of that ministry and pre-marriage counseling right now. I've really enjoyed that over the years. So. I remember many, many years ago. Mm -hmm back when I was considered to be a young adult. Yes. There was uh, something that you guys did even back then, mm -hmm. like a summer, just to connect people together yeah. as the young adults. And that was just like a one little season. Yeah, I think it was a learning center we did for young adults for yeah. one season and had people over to our house for a cookout, that kind of stuff. That was one so, of the first times I met you. Yeah. And so you reminded me that I'm old and- A little you're, bit. You're getting there. I'm, a, I'm getting there. <laughs> you got it. Well, part of the conversation again today is this idea of the core value of loving the church. And it, you, we all know that it stems with loving God and loving his word and loving truth. And those are the prerequisites. So it kind of starts with loving God, then loving others. And then with Fellowship Bible Church, we have loving the family, yeah. loving the church and loving the world. Those three are kind of, you know, uh, just triplets next to each other that everything about loving God and truth stems from. So when we focus on the church um, and, and let's just focus on the local church right now because I think that's where the conversation is going to go. Tim, you've had um, four months here to experience the local church of FBC. Just give us a brief take on where you see Fellowship Bible Church and how we can grow, but then also what are some of the successes that you see happening here at Fellowship Bible Church when it comes to us loving the church? Well, I would say um, it... I have lived in a variety of places. We've moved uh, 20 times in our marriage, 36 years. Wow. So we have moved around quite a bit. And uh, I feel that FBC, there's a certain sense where we're um, an exceptional church in that um, some of the things that we do or think are very different 
from a lot of churches in mm -hmm. North America. <clears throat> and um, so I, that, those have stood out to me. One of the things that I think has been impressive is the level of understanding that people have in the Word of God. And again, I'm not saying everybody, like some of us would feel like we're, wow, we're new at this or we're growing in this. Everybody's growing in that. But the conversations that I get to have um, impress me with where people's understanding are at, because in some of the places that I've been and I would talk about those kinds of things, you, you knew you had to start like further back. Mm -hmm. So I think that's been something that's really stood out. I think the um, friendliness, openness, uh, all, we, we met the Beitzels at, mm. uh, because they're friends of LeMay's and of course, you know, Ashley and Ben get married. Yeah. And so these guys were involved with the wedding and it, there was just, it's just kind of stuff clicking right away. Yeah. Right. So already before we even moved out here, we were getting to know people and enjoying their company and mm -hmm. fellowship. And that to me was another, um, trait about us that I think mm. was very encouraging. I just heard of, um, someone who is new visiting our, our church here for the last couple of weeks and just um, thrilled with how uh, people came alongside her uh, to help her to see where, hey, this is a community group, you know, area that you could fit into. Hey, why don't you come sit with us for this service? Like mm -hmm. just really linking up. We probably don't do that all. We would say not perfect. Right. But there's some really cool dynamics like that that are happening. I think that sometimes we get. Um, maybe as a new guy coming in, you get to see some of this dynamic and, and rejoice in it. Whereas living in it for so long, you kind of miss some of that stuff, I think, from time to time. Because mm -hmm. we're looking at the things maybe we need to shore up sure. and fix. And, but it's neat to, to focus on the positives. Yeah, yeah and, much so. And, and more on some of the other things that you didn't mention is that you're affiliated with Fellowship 3. Yep, downstairs Absolutely. with me. So there is a little yeah, bit a of a community. Dweller, yeah. A dweller. Dweller. Yeah. yeah, we've been He's got a lot of things yes. going for him. And you are in my community group, so feel That's free right. to fire away, open and honestly about what that looks like. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I agree, Marlon. I think you do a great job of pursuing people mm -hmm. and engaging yeah. people from that standpoint yeah. of kind of being on the hospitality or welcome team at Fellowship mm -hmm. Three or within the community group. You know, what what do you have to kind of throw in there from what you've seen over the twenty plus years at FBC? Yeah, so I, I think everything Tim said is absolutely true. Um, I think there's a lot of community that people can have here at Fellowship Bible Church. And I think if you um, seek that out, which I know the Sanfords have, you can connect very quickly with folks. I think some people's experience might be different from yours coming that would in. be true. Yeah. They might say, you know what, uh, I'm new to church in general, or... I'm new and, and, and I'm not the guy up front and I, I don't want to be, quite frankly. And some people even like coming and kind of hiding. And they, mm -hmm. they love being at Fellowship Bible Church because it's this big church. You can sneak in and if yep. you get out mm -hmm. halfway through the, mm -hmm. the end of the last song, you, you don't even have to talk to anybody. Yep. Does that and happen around it here? It happens. Oh, wow. Yeah, yes. it's, it's a real shame. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, so... And I, and I understand that's our society, and for a short time that works. And there are phases in my life when that's what I want. I, I just want to kind of come do my thing. And yeah. um, I mean, I, I, I love the Lord. I love worshiping with other people. And sometimes it's just kind of nice to chill and not have people disrupt my life. Mm. But that's not really church. Mm -hmm. um, when we're doing that, we're going through the motions. And like I said, it, it, it might be fun to be an observer for a, a short time, but that fun ends. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, for many people, it's when you go through difficult times in your life, your family, and you, you need something. Um, but I also found we lived overseas for a year. And one of the things, you know, the, the first three months or so is such a relief. I had no responsibilities with church, no responsibility with a family. If there was the two-year-old birthday party, I didn't have to go to it because we, we didn't know any <laughs> two-year-olds. But man, after three or six months, you start to realize you miss those relationships. You miss somebody who notices when you're not there and uh, somebody who's glad to see you when you are there and you're involved in one another's mm -hmm. lives. Yeah. Family's important for that. But man, the church is important for that even to a higher level. And that's yeah. why something that even last week's sermon, I think it might have been John Avery that mentioned this, uh, 
a family within a family. Yeah. He, sure. he alluded to that. And I know that they didn't want to elaborate too much last week because it was really the focus on the, the, uh, the actual family. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and now as we're broadening what the, the, the term is a family, I think we can still define the church as a family. And right. I, and it, it, I think it just stems from Christ in us hmm. to give you that, right. that, that just call that drive that is like, I need to be around other people who are like-minded. Yeah. And, and so if you're missing it yeah. and if you have the Holy spirit in you, where you are like, where's, where's my life at right now? I'm, I'm right. three months in, in London. I don't know anybody. Yeah. I'm part of a church, but I'm going to sit in the back rows. There's something that's stirring <laughs> in yeah. you right. that should be pushing you towards other people. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and you know, another part of it too is even that I, I see the church as not these people who do ministry and yeah, let me plop something in the in the plate on Sunday mornings so that they can keep doing their thing. Uh, the, the the ministers here are creating an environment so that I can do my ministry. Right. You know, what is my ministry? Mm. It it might be the welcoming person who looks for somebody around me. Are they new? And often we don't reach out because we don't know what to say. Or I'm afraid I'll say, are you new? And they say, no, I've been here for 10 years. That's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just enter into that conversation. Or is my ministry, I love to encourage young couples and help them get off to a great start in their life. What, whatever my ministry is, that's a big aspect of why I wanted to be part of this church is because I said, uh, there are a lot of things this church offers me, but... There's also some things that I can offer this church and the people within this church. And I can form those relationships mm. and they've got the mechanism for me here to be able to perform that ministry that, that God's given to me. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I know you would agree with this, too. Like there is there is the... Uh, crisis times when, uh, you know, you need that fellowship, right? There's the things you're talking about here, but there's also the aspect of uh, like, like the word of God actually uses familial terms mm -hmm. for us, right? Mm -hmm. Brother, sister, like those kinds of things. And um, for me anyways, the more I, the longer I've lived, the more I've learned the value of actually being a part of a fellowship together mm -hmm. And um, just all that that brings, a lot of it is unplanned in the sense of it's not like on my bucket list where I'm trying to check these things right, off. It's right. just I get to know somebody. And as I get to know them there, whatever God's teaching them is beginning to impact me, too. And maybe vice versa, hopefully vice mm -hmm. versa. Right. Mm -hmm. But there's this. There's this growing together and over time, this uh, development to where, wow, Ephesians, I appreciate what Marlon said, because it, it tells us in chapter four that we're supposed to be equipping the saints to do the work of the ministry. That's what you're talking mm, about. Right. But it's set that so that we all come together in unity of the faith. Well, that's mm -hmm. all part of what we're and the value of that. You um you begin to enjoy those kinds of relationships and see the spiritual benefit to yourself and to them, each other mutually. And uh, I think that just the more we get a hold of that, the more we hunger for it. And it does yeah. Full for us. Yeah. And again, not stealing the thunder from where this coming weekend services are going to go. But I, I hope that when we attend church this coming weekend, we walk away with a greater appreciation of the church, a greater yes. hunger to to be connected with the body of Christ in a way that calls us to grow, calls right. us to connect with others and calls us to serve mm -hmm. in a way that we value those yeah. around us. And we value the people who call Fellowship Bible Church their home. Yeah. And we value the ministries that go on here. And there's something to that where if you just sit back, Mark Carey will call it to sit, soak and sour. That is that is not what right. God has called us to right. do. Yeah. You know, he's called us to be a part of a body and utilize our gifts and talents in a way. And it begins with, I think, like you said, Marlon, not everybody is like Tim and Sue Sanford, where they're going to be pursuing <laughs> other sure. people, pursuing what does it look like to get plugged in. So how do we raise that bar? How do we raise the bar mm -hmm. of trying to have the people that are uh, on the fringes to yeah. where, where they're encircled in there. Like, what does that really look like? Well, I will help you transition on this. Okay. I don't know if you're ready to make this I am. or not, but uh, Fellowship 3 was started some time ago. 
partly as, hey, we're running out of some space. We need, we need yeah. to put some people down the dun dungeon here. But we, those of us who started attending there very quickly said, well, wait a minute, it's way more than that. Mm -hmm. We love being part of a group of a hundred and some folks mm -hmm. who every Sunday morning we see the same people and we kind of start to get to know one another and we interact a little bit more and it's easier to have a lunch every so often. So, you know, we often hear that it, as a church gets larger, it has to get smaller. Mm -hmm. And that's not the only answer. You know, if you're going upstairs, it's great. I, I like to go up to big church occasionally as well. <laughs> uh, but... Um, what what I'm getting at here is I think we have to be purposeful in some mechanisms. You, there's no way to make everyone get connected to everybody else and to make them be a family. You, you can't force that. But I think we as a church um, need some mechanisms so that that becomes more likely and that those who want to know and be known can absolutely find that here in this large church mm -hmm. with everything that this large church offers. So Fellowship 3 is one way of doing that. FSAT is another way of doing that. Sitting at the same place in um, your Fellowship 1 and 2, uh, getting to know those people and, and actually reaching out and saying hello, mm -hmm. getting a name. Th mm -hmm. Those are ways to do it. But then small groups, I think, is probably the single biggest thing we can do in a large church to build those connections that really matter, mm -hmm. where, where we're more than just a face and maybe even a name, maybe not even a name. But you start to to be like, hey, how's it going with so and so? Or yeah. um, somebody, you ask a, someone, how, how how's your week? And they tell you a little snippet, and you connect it with everything else you know about that mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. And and you can say, well, how about we grab coffee? And I'd like to hear more about that. Man, when you're going through something, those are refreshing words. When somebody you you, yeah. you throw that out there. And they're picking up what you're putting down, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. and, and you're going to a place where yeah. people know your name. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it, yeah, it starts, I look at it like a funnel, yeah. right? You yeah. know, the, yeah. the, the church gathering is kind of the wide end of the, of the funnel. Yeah. And we want people to feel comfortable in that gathering. Yeah. And then and, and if that's with 300, 400 people in a room, or if that's it with 100 people in a room, you know, you can find those ways to do it. Sure. But then as you filter down this funnel, you're going to be getting deeper and deeper relationships with a smaller number of people. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. so if you're starting, let's pick Fellowship 3 with 120, 150 people, and then you're part of then a community group of maybe right. 15 or 16 people, that's even better. Yeah, right. Yeah, and yeah. then it, funnel, it, it has the potential to funnel even more narrower to yeah. where you have a deeper relationship with maybe one, two, three, or four people yeah. on what's called a discipleship component. Yep. And it's funny how the church hires you, Tim, and your pastor of discipleship, but they also say, here, help out with community groups too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so, so where's that link of what Marlon yeah. is talking about of community groups and where everybody knows your name and you have those outlets to then this idea of what does discipleship look like? Yeah. Well, I think uh, first off, you have to back up to that foundation of that funnel yeah. and say, what's the purpose of all that? Mm -hmm. And the the what I'll say, the ultimate purpose of that is obviously there's fellowship and, and social events that are going on, friendships and relationship that's being built. But the purpose of all that, I believe, is ultimately so that the life of Christ is being displayed in my, in other words, I'm maturing, right? I'm mm -hmm. growing. Mm -hmm. and And then ultimately that growth and maturity demonstrates the praise of God because this is a miracle that he can do that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So with that being the thinking then, um, to me, discipleship fits into that community group so well because those relationships are being built there. It's centered around the word of God. Every one of them has something that they're studying, that they're working through together. So there's a context of all of that. But then it becomes a thing of how does that truth then practically impact my life? Mm. And and for some of us at some times in our life, we need, we need somebody to kind of walk us through a little bit of that. Sometimes we connect it ourselves, but a lot of times we need someone to say, hey, this is what you're saying you believe, but this is how you're living your life and they're inconsistent with each other. Have you ever thought mm -hmm. about that? Mm -hmm. Well, no, I haven't. And now God has been able to bring that to the surface and say, well, child of mine, this is because there's a disconnect there, right? And so someone helps that. So I think that the community groups um, play a huge part because there's so many components that are already there. That's, that's the richness mm -hmm. of a community group 
that now you start tying that in. The, the struggle, I think, happens, or at least what I'm finding at some level, is um, that there's some people who feel like there should be this, I'll call it, a, I'll embellish it, a, a huge gap between mm-hmm. the one discipling and the one being discipled, mm-hmm. like as if we've got to have this major maturity difference, when in reality, that can be peer to peer, mm-hmm. right? There is sometimes when, okay, I've gone a few mile markers down the road than the next person. Right. And so there's a following of that kind of stuff. But really, you know, funny that we, we talk about family here mm-hmm. and we disciple our children. Mm-hmm. We're doing that all the time. Whether we ever call it that is a different story, but that's really what's happening. So we all actually, right. you know, parents know how to do that. We've been discipled by our parents, some for good, some for bad, right? Mm-hmm. But there's been enough of this passing on. That's what the guys were talking about on Sunday of mm-hmm. like, what about the next generation? And that's really what's happening. We're, we're passing on maybe something that the Lord has been teaching our hearts mm. and we're wanting him to use us to teach it to someone else's life. Yeah. And being sensitive to the spirit of like when it's time to say yes. something. Yeah. There's lots and of ingredients. When is it time to yeah. listen? And yes. you know, when is it time to go pursue somebody because you, you know, yeah. are like, okay, I haven't seen them in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Or when is the time, maybe somebody's going to be pursuing you yeah, and be right. open to receive that's it. That's right. And, exactly. and, and that starts with, again, relationships. Yep. And I think that's so critical yeah. to the, to the story here that For we're sure. sharing. I will highlight that we're not saying anything new under the sun here. Mm-hmm. This has been going on in churches for years upon years. It's been going on here at Fellowship Bible Church for years. I mean, back when they used to call them mini churches, that was kind of a reason for that. Uh, I'll even highlight the fact that last year at this time when we were relaunching community groups and launching them um, here on this Fellowship Family podcast, there's three different episodes that I was able to interview three different couples of their benefits um, and of being in a group and uh, even leading a group. So I challenge you guys, go back and listen to those. Um, But there's always fresh perspectives. So Marlon, I'll turn your way and uh, give us some of your benefits that you've experienced over the years of of how community groups uh, have been helpful to you, whether you've been part of them or whether you've been leading. Yeah. um, Boy, that's that's a load of questions. Like, where do you go? (laughs) Yes. Of being in a family. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So I I guess for starters, um, you know, we are in a a very large church and um, I I think we've had phenomenal teaching over the years. And uh, when I was new here at Fellowship Bible Church and I came to church and we actually opened our Bibles and we actually said, let's see what God is telling us in these scriptures. That was so refreshing for me. And um, I think we we run the danger of it becoming an academic exercise, Mm -hmm. you know, and I know Mark Carey's heart. I know the other pastor's hearts. That is the last thing they want us to be is an academic church where, you know, you're puffed up by this knowledge that you have. So I I think um, small groups are an opportunity for discipleship. It's not guaranteed you're going to disciple or be discipled if you're in a small group. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I can even rephrase a question. How has it impacted you? Yeah. You and Don and Martha and Emma and absolutely your family. Yeah. So I I think number one is we've got friendships that developed when we were in a first small group here at Fellowship Bible Church 20 some years ago that we still know each other and stay in contact in a way that we never would have if we were not in that small group with individuals. Um, It was an opportunity for me for some leadership and to do ministry. I like teaching, I like leading groups and so forth. And um, that was a a good opportunity to use those gifts in that way. Um, I think it is a it has been a tremendous help for us. We've gone through some really challenging times in our family. You know, my daughter had cancer six years ago. Don had cancer three years ago. When you're when you're out alone and you're going through those things, mm-hmm. and by the way, those things never announce themselves ahead of time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, having people who you knew they were praying for you, they show up, they bring meals, they they care, they're praying. Um, and you get an opportunity to do that for them, too, mm. when they're going through those things, where there's new kids and having kids who are playing with one another because they see each other every week or every two weeks. Um, there's there's no way to duplicate those things 
apart from spending time together. So small groups at least is this, we're going to purpose to spend time together with, with you. And we're kind of inviting you to enter into our lives. You're coming into our home, we're going into your home. Um, and in our society, that's pretty weird and rare. <laughs> that doesn't happen a lot. So less that, and less these days. Yeah, yeah. so that, that's a huge step if nothing happens other than that. But then as believers, we were saying, uh, let's sit down and let's wrestle with what we heard on Sunday morning. Well, you're a young dad, just like I am. W what does that look like for you? You know, I, I feel like I really messed up this week. And I, uh, w what do you do about that? Having those conversations, those relationships and the time when you're going to be together to go through that. Mm -hmm. um, one other thing I would throw out to you. I asked, I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, Mark Carey once, <clears throat> I said, Mark, if there's one thing you could magically wave a wand and change in this church, what would you do? <clears throat> and I was very curious to hear what he'd have to say. I thought he would say, well, I could narrow it down to 10. He said, I know there's one thing. <clears throat> he said, I would have every couple in this church in a small group, and I would have that small group split up, men and women together, and men spending time talking and praying together, and I'd have women spending time talking and praying together. I was like, that's he it? He had that right off the tip of his he, tongue. He had to it go. right off the tip of yeah. his tongue. <laughs> and I said, why is that so important for you? He said, I think a lot of people can kind of hear good things and they can have um, best of intentions, but when you put a couple of guys together and put a couple of ladies together, life becomes real. Hmm. And they start to really say, well, how does this look in your life? That's the that's when benefit really starts to happen. That's when discipleship, I think, mm. starts to really happen. Mm. Well, that's a nice little segue because Tim, you answered the first question, part A of you know what are we doing well as fellowship, and I'll yeah. use this to kind of wrap up our time and our conversation here. What are some of the opportunities or challenges that you see FBC can grow in when it comes to this idea of loving the church, valuing the church, and being a part of community and discipleship? Well, I think some of it goes back to what Marlon talked about, that there's some of us who are in a stage of life where we want to come in and we want to get out. And um, I think that's an area that there are seasons of life where that's necessary. Maybe for, you know, I need some refreshment kind of thing. But I, I think that the more that we grow as believers, realizing that we really do need each other. I mean, the, the body of Christ is necessary for us to be a part of. And I think the sooner we recognize that and we can recognize that without having crisis, right? Mm -hmm. Like crisis mm -hmm. often forces sure. us to recognize yeah. it. But maturity means we can recognize that ahead of time and even make some choices about that. Um, and something that kept coming to my mind as Marlon was talking was the, the scripture talks about building your house on rock or on sand, right? When the storms come on sand, that's when it's really exposed. Well, we can build our, our house, uh, our life, right, on, mm -hmm. the, on the rock. And then when the storms come, we're in a, we're in a much better place for that. Mm -hmm. So I think the other thing then with that is just, again, this whole discipleship context that we're talking about of... Um, of trusting the Lord to take us more and more on that journey, as I said, where the life of Christ is actually being displayed. It's showing up. People can look at you mm -hmm. and say, man, I see the Lord in you. Is it perfect? No. And sometimes we get caught up in the, well, I have to attain to perfection. But the reality is, is we're on a journey and it's a process really that the Lord is taking us through. And the more and more that we walk yielded to the spirit of God and he begins to do that work, there's a transformation. I love in scripture when it says that we beholding mm. as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord yeah. are being changed, right? So it's really a, a, a considering him, mm -hmm. thinking of him, talking about him, getting to know him and his spirit begins to do a work in, in our lives that changes us. I think mm. that our society needs that. Mm. It needs people who are a light like that because it's going to stand more and more in stark contrast mm -hmm. to how everyone else in the world is living. Right? Yeah, that, I, I love that because there's just a next level of where that can happen. I mean, yes, it can happen uh, with just your spouse or just within your yeah. family, but it exponentially grows and God uses it. I mean, he calls the church to 
spur one another on to right. love and good deeds. That's right. And yeah. to, to use other people for that is part of his method of growing everyone mm-hmm. <laughs> at the same time. Mm-hmm. And that discipleship process happens through relationships, through community, yep. ultimately through his church. Yeah. And, you know, so what next? I guess that's kind of like, what, what, what are we looking at here and why are we having this conversation? And I would challenge everybody to say, hopefully God is doing a stirring in your heart right now that if you're not a part of a community group, if you're not a part of some sort of smaller setting where you're getting together with a group of people, um, first of all, why not? Yeah. And then second of all, what what can you do to get plugged in? Yeah. And over the next five weeks, we're going to be having a campaign where we're going to call you guys to be able to do that. We'll have plenty of opportunities for you to sign up to, to go to group community groups that can go to the website. There'll be people in lobby before and after service on Sundays. And the, the goal is, again, just like you said, Marlon, if Mark is saying his heart would have everybody be in a group, let's see how can we, we can make that happen. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the first step is if you're not in a group, go pursue one and uh, and let God use that to change your, your lives. Mm-hmm. Second of all, if you're in a group, and you're feeling comfortable, you know, sitting back and being fat and happy in a group, is God nudging you in the next kind of next season of your life? Because you call me fat and happy. No, <laughs> you're looking very slim and trim, Marlon. But yeah, <laughs> but there, there are next steps to being a part of a group for a long time. I'm in Mark's group. I think he's kicking me out. I'm right here. kicking you out now. <laughs> yeah, we shall see. But, but where is God leading you? And if it's you and your spouse to have those conversations to say, OK, how many groups are there in the church? And can those groups fulfill Every person who calls Fellowship Bible Church their home. Mm-hmm. No, right now we cannot. Right. There needs to be more leaders in order for these groups to multiply and grow in order to accommodate yeah. this uh, call to action. Yeah. Right, right now we have 40 small groups, right? Uh, there'll be four more added to that this fall. Mm-hmm. So there's going to be some newer mm-hmm. ones that are happening. But when you look at the the dynamic of our whole fellowship, that's not... That's not near enough. Right. right? And uh, so I would agree with that. I think that there's certainly let's be let's be asking the Lord about that and and asking him to give us a a heart for that. But also in the leading of that, in order for us to have more groups, we're going to have to have people Mm -hmm. doing that leading. And and then that's the definition of what does it look like to lead? You know, And, and, and there's there's been some stigmas on that, I would say, at Fellowship over the last many years. And um, I'm not going to put you on the spot to say, give us the criteria, Tim. But it, you think about, you've already said that discipleship can happen peer on peer. Yeah. And you don't have to be perfect and you don't have to be, have arrived in order to disciple somebody. So therefore, the same can apply. You don't have to be, you don't have to have been arrived and oh, be the perfect Christian to exactly. say, yes, I'm willing now to lead a group. Right. So. Yeah. I, I think there's there's some level of, uh, you know, being a part of a group for a little bit of time. Um, I, yeah. You know, I think there's some yeah. other components of that. I would suggest let the church know if you're willing to be a leader and, you know, we'll find those ways to get you plugged in. Yeah. And, and one of the things I would encourage, too, is I think that the spirit of God nudges us in mm. regards to that stuff. And so there are some people who are saying, hey, I, I'm willing to be a leader. How is that happening? Well, mm. we're not we don't have this campaign where we're making phone calls and, you know, that, hey, will you be right. a leader kind of right. stuff. But somewhere the spirit of God is beginning to nudge their heart and encouraging them in that regard because there's a there's a dual benefit there's the yes we're starting a, a, another group and yes those people are going to be benefited but i can tell you and you know you marlon talks about he likes to teach well i learn a ton when i'm teaching right because there's right. all this preparation and it's not like you have to have i shouldn't say it that way like as if there's this big burden on us but as you think through well this is what we're going to talk about it can be as simple as well this was the message on sunday and so now our small group is going to start talking about that mm-hmm. so i have to think through maybe some questions some mm-hmm. and be aware of that and i tell you it, it stretches you it, yeah so it's a challenge to you but there's a there's a payoff if you want to call it that way a benefit yeah. to you. And I would also say that don't feel like you're the one who has to disciple every single person in that group as or the leader. Or have all the answers. Or have all the answers. Right. And so there's, again, the shared camaraderie of a yep. group. And that's what I love about our group, Marlon, mm-hmm. that you're a part of it. Other people are a part of it. And that we are in each other's lives. And 
yes, I might call myself the quote unquote leader or people, FPC calls me that, but that is, that is not the accurate method of how we operate. Yeah. And a lot of our meetings, you know, we go through seasons of doing different things, but often is, Hey, we, we all, who went to church on Sunday, who went Saturday night. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and you'll have three or four questions and you get started into those questions and it, the, the questions all lead us to kind of like, okay, so we've talked about this. What else are you seeing in scripture? What does it look like for you? And, that has been some fun parts yeah. of, of really digging deeper and going outside of as we study the sermon or review the sermon, that we're getting deeper and expanding more and finding more passages that are applications or yeah. thoughts or yeah. challenging kind of what are we learning from this? And I think the the, the, the preachers who've been speaking on Sunday would love to hear some of our conversations because sometimes <laughs> we say, you know what? I think he's wrong on this one. And we'll go starting to dig through scripture and get our phones out. We're, you know, looking through stuff. And sometimes we agree, sometimes we don't. But that's exactly what we're supposed to be doing during the week mm -hmm. is to mm -hmm. dig into yeah. what we're being taught and yeah. saying, is, is that right? Is, is, yeah. is that and, and it, is it right? And then what does it look like in my life? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, guys, a lot that we've been able to unpack and there's obviously way more that we could. But just to wrap it up and summarize, I, I think valuing the local church is critical loving God and then loving others. Mm -hmm. And then that leads us into these next levels of growth yeah. and, and being a part of people's lives is part of it. So if you are not in a group, um, you can go to the website, fbcva.org slash groups is the way to find it. Or you can just, you're a couple clicks away when you go to the little drop down menus of connect and then find groups. So that's the first step. The second step, if you are a part of a group and you're thinking God is nudging you to be a leader, let us know. Um, just contact church, reach out. Um, your perfection assistant, Carmen Dowdy, would be the, yeah. the person to go to. Yeah. Contact Tim as well. Um, just let us know. And, yeah. and talk to your own community group leader uh, about that as well. Mm -hmm. And there would be some, some conversations that can stir out of that. Mm -hmm. And what is God leading your whole group to do? Yeah, because we, we have a whole team that's dedicated towards helping leaders lead well. Mm -hmm. So... It's not like you're going to be out there on an island by yourself. Right. There's things. We're developing resources. We're developing ourselves as a team to be in that position. So there's just a, yeah. a lot of benefit. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Tim, Marlon, for the conversation. Really appreciate it. Yep. Looking forward to actually we're, we're going to have a special episode released um, in just a couple of days. The video that's being played in the Sunday sermon or weekend sermon um, had to be really shortened for the time con constraints. It was a 45 minute conversation that was awesome with Mark Carey and the crowd that was in that video. That's going to be released for you guys to see the full um, conversation. So look for that. And then we'll be having more episodes to come about what other ministries are launching and what is going on behind the scenes and the vi vision and values of all those ministries. So keep tabs on this channel here and um, we will keep you posted what's happening in Fellowship Bible Church. Well, thanks so much for watching and listening. And until we do chat again, let's let Christ be the focus of our lives each and every day.